Broadcasting from Miami Beach in, in Florida, well, another in the Daily Dose, uh, number 32. Uh, and I'll just turn it right over to Ipe. Good day, Ipe, and welcome. Yeah, so thank you, John. Uh, today I thought I'm going to just show uh, some basic cases. Uh, so we'll start sharing straight away. The, the thing that we're going to stress on is the dissection how you dissect uh, for aneurysms. So the thing is, when you come to vascular surgery, um, it's, it's a very different type of surgery. It is not like, uh, let's go do this. It's like, you know, it's like the surgery that you do after, you know, your favorite music, not the rap hot music, something like a gazelle. In India, we say a gazelle or a semi-classical uh, music. You listen to that. You relax, you be ready for the whole day, okay? Be ready for the whole day. Maybe it will get over in half an hour. So, but you don't want to be ready for, you, want, you don't want to be prepared for just half an hour. You, ha you have to be prepared for the whole day. So in vascular surgery, I tell you, even if you don't have one hand, you can do it, but the attitude needs to be correct, okay? If you don't have the right attitude, I mean, you have four hands, you have, uh, you know, you have exemplary skill, you may not be able to do vascular surgery. So that's what I'm going to show you today. And when people see all these edited videos, they get an idea that, you know, the edited videos are usually five minutes, five, six minutes and all that. And people get an idea that vascular surgery is done fast or uh, being a fast gun is something of, a, you know, something of an ego thing or something. So believe me, Fast is slow, okay? It's like drawing a gun and uh, firing a shot. So fast is slow. You need to be precise and clear, unhurried movements, okay? So that's what we're going to show you right now. You can hear me clearly, all of you? Uh, yes, we can. Okay, I'm going to share now. Can you see my... Can you see my screen? Yes. Right. So you're going to start this, this is an M2, M3 uh, ruptured aneurysm. So we're going to start off with this. Uh, so that's a CT scan. And that's an aneurysm. So of course it's a ruptured aneurysm. So we're going to, uh, the brain looks a bit angry, but not very angry. We've seen much more angrier brains. So here, my first thing would be to get into the systems because I don't want the brain to swell at all. So plus it gives me an opportunity to start from proximal. So I'm looking at the arachnoid, the arachnoid is really, really thick. Can you appreciate the very thick arachnoid there? So you can see the arachnoid pretty thick, okay, very, very thick. So you are using a scissor to cut on to the optic nerve there. There is a blood clot there, okay. You're not really worried, you know. Uh, your movements are always, have you seen Alpha Zero playing chess? Alpha Zero is the new AI program, you know, it's, uh, it just bet, in 2017, it bet stockfish and it's, uh, if you see the style of play, that's how you do vascular surgery, okay? Re completely relaxed, get your position right, everything right, and then you're not even thinking about aneurysm. You're not even thinking about aneurysm. You're just going on, enhancing your position. Going on, enhancing your position, okay? And how do you enhance your position? Open arachnoid, okay? And opening arachnoid will be small movements which, are, which has a purpose, okay? The purpose will not be immediately clear, but there is a purpose. So you see that, that is a carotid now. That is your clinoid process, okay? That is your optic now. The optico window is almost nothing. 
So this is a lateral carotid window, okay? So that's a lateral carotid window. You are expanding this lateral carotid window slowly but surely. No retractors needs to be used at this time. You see, when you open this, actually it is helping you to open the sylvian also. You will see that when you open the optic carotid window, this is an extension of the proximal sylvian. So, and when you open the membrane of Liliquest, you see the frontal and the temporal lobe is slowly being opened up sharply without any uh, retraction there. It is slowly opening it up. Okay. Well, Sharp section. That's a posterior clinoid. That is something that I would have drilled if it, this is a basilar. Okay. This is a basilar aneurysm. Maybe this, this size of a posterior clinoid would not be very acceptable for me. So I would have probably incised it here and then drilled it and I would have got a beautiful window. You've seen these videos many times. Okay. You guys want to see it again? I can show you this video. So now that is the third nerve. And the third nerve is getting into the oculomotor trigon there. So that's cavernous sinus roof. Okay. We've seen many paracavernous, para, paraclinoid aneurysms where we have gone and incised this and got the C3 carotid. We've seen it many times. So that is the third nerve. That is the third nerve. And I'm going to peel off that arachnoid from the third nerve. Now you must be wondering, why am I doing this in a MC aneurysm? You will understand. Okay, very soon you will understand uh, why am I doing this. So again, I don't want to expose the third nerve. I just want to keep a layer of arachnoid on the third nerve. I'm just going to take off that temporal lobe away. You can see the layer of arachnoid on the third nerve. Can you see that? You can see that layer of arachnoid is there on the third nerve. Yes. So I am slowly going lateral to the third nerve, cutting on the third nerve, going posteriorly. You can go all the way on the third nerve like this. And this is the most beautiful way of clipping a, clipping a basala. If you go on the third nerve, the third nerve will lead you to the interpeduncular space and there will be a, there you will see the P1 going over the third nerve, the P1, top of P1 will lead you to the basala. So that is the most easiest way of tackling a basala. Okay. So you see this third nerve, what I'm doing, I, if I go all the way back, I will, this third nerve will lead me to the interpetangular, whatever you name it, membrane of lily liquids or whatever, you just have to follow the third nerve and you follow it all the way to the interpetangular. The vessel that you see above will be P1 and below will be superior cerebellar and you just find out where the P1 leads you, the P1 will always lead you to the basilar tip aneurysm. Okay, right. So now we are going in uh, for some more dissection. Proximal sylvian. So now you are seeing that the carotid bifurcation is almost clear now. You can see the PCOM going in there. Okay. So I am going to do sylvian, proximal sylvian dissection. Right. Here you need the brain to be held by a retractor. Okay. I mean, don't believe these religious people who say, oh, there is, I, I do everything without a retractor and all that. Okay. You can. Sometimes you can think about doing everything with one hand. That's all there, but you know, neurosurgery is not about uh, struggling and doing something. Neurosurgery is about uh, you know ease of surgery, you know, enjoying it. So you see, I'm not in any kind of hurry. Okay, I am just looking at all the arachnoid, every arachnoid. People ask me, how do I cut the sylvian? I have no method of cutting the sylvian. Wherever there is arachnoid, I cut it. Okay, so absolutely no. No method from proximal to distal, distal to proximal, above the vein, below the vein, nothing. You see, you take off all the arachnoid, all that remains would be the vessels. That's, that is my motto. All right. You take off every single arachnoid strand in this region, whatever remains would be the vessels. So that makes it very easy. So you just mobilize the arachnoid, okay? Mobilize the vessel, mobilize the arachnoid away from the vessel, cut it. Right. So that's exactly what I'm doing, keeping on doing it. So cutting, that's a carotid 
and I'm cutting towards the carotid now. Okay, there is blood there, so you have to be one has to be careful. Retract with your suction. Okay, gentle retraction with your suction, and see the edge where you see where you're cutting, because this Kamiyama scissors offers you the beautiful choice of seeing the edge, seeing where you're cutting. Okay, both the limbs you are seeing where you're cutting. Now you can see another layer. Once you cut that, you can see another layer. Okay, beautiful, another layer. Okay, you want to cut that layer also. Okay, so step by step. You try to retract it or push it or pull it, the brain will start bleeding and then uh, uh, it will be looking very inelegant. Of course, you clip the aneurysm, but it will look, it will not look elegant. Neurosurgery is not for doing the job alone. Eh? Remember that. Neurosurgery is for enjoying. Okay, when you, when you, it's like writing, it's like an art. Okay, people should enjoy seeing your surgeries. So, and so you go ahead and cut all that arachnoid away. And this doesn't require extremely high skill or anything. Okay? It is just method. So, people sometimes go, oh, some people tell me vascular surgery is not for me. I mean, it's too high. You see, there is nothing about it. This way, I can open every single cistern. I can get into the basilar. I can get into the superior cerebellar. I can get into any aneurysm you want. Okay? All what seems impossible is possible by these small strands of cutting and patience. That is all you need. So I'm telling you, your mindset is the most important thing in vascular surgery. You see the masters, they will never hurry. Okay. The only thing that will make them look hurried is that double fast videos and all that because you'd get only 12 minutes in a conference to present and then you'll have to You'll have to make your video super fast. That's the only thing that will make these people look hurried. I mean, I also have to do that sometimes because otherwise you'll never finish clipping, you know. In the midway, you'll have to say bye-bye. Uh, so, otherwise, if you get give me a chance like this, you can sit the whole day and keep on cutting. And you will reach anywhere you want. I'm telling you. Okay, I, I take off this temporal lobe completely lateral, you can reach up to the superior cerebellar without any issue. So, you see that? That last bit of very thick arachnoid opens up and suddenly, voila, you will have the entire MCA in your hands now. You see? Not a little bit of retraction, okay? Not a little bit of traction, pushing or pulling. Just removing that clot, okay? And then you have the entire MCA there. That is clot. Interspersed with some arachnoid. When you do that with your dissector, the clot will go away and the arachnoid will remain. The arachnoid, you have to cut it, okay? You don't want to remove the arachnoid like that. So what you see as clots will go away and the arachnoid strands, whatever remains, you can cut. Okay, now you put in the retractor there because you've opened up. You completely opened up. Okay. Now you see a little bit more, the arachnoid there. You see arachnoid there and then you're going to open up that furthermore. Again, you use your patty and your suction, okay? And this is something that I really like. For the last 10, 12 years, I like this. It's cheap, okay? It's very, very cheap and it's very effective. We have the diamond knife, but I still prefer this. Old habits die hard, you see? So, uh, so this is very, very good. So I, I can raise because with the tip of the needle, I can just hook up that 
hook up that arachnoid and then cut. Okay, so the tip of the needle will hook up the arachnoid and then cut it. Yeah, see that? The bevel is the cutting edge. The tip hooks it up and the bevel cuts it. That is how you should use the needle. Okay, go flat, the non traumatic surface turn, and then you keep on cutting that layer of arachnoid. Again, doesn't require much skill. Just calm, easy hands. You see that vessel? It's just next to that. But again, you just need calm, easy dissection. That's all. All right? Nothing big in this. Gone are the days when people think, you know, these vascular guys are hallowed and, you know, they have some extra sensory perception and there's nothing about it. It's just small arachnoid dissection, slow arachnoid dissection, okay? You give me a chance, I can sit the whole day doing it. I can completely expose. Sometimes you don't find an MC aneurysm. Sometimes there were days earlier days of mine when we know there is an MC aneurysm, but we don't have an angiogram. Okay. So I used to sit and, you know, you could see the one, by the time I was finished, you could see the entire MCA from the carotid, all the perforators, everything up to the distal. And then I find the aneurysm. I mean, then I don't have to, I really don't have to target the aneurysm. I target the entire MCA. Okay. So I, I used to do that before. Okay. Now again, I, and I enjoy it. There is a, nothing that I despise about it. I don't think, oh my God, I have to sit and do this. This is my bloody job, okay? And this is what I enjoy. I, I enjoy this job and that's why I'm doing this, okay? So keep on dissecting, dissecting, dissecting. Again, see that? Under very high magnification, keep on opening it up. Now, some of you might be thinking, where is this aneurysm? I was not thinking about the aneurysm when I was doing this, okay? Keeping on opening. Now, once I keep on doing that, I find a loop. You see, the clot has to be washed away. Arachnoid cannot be washed away. So you irrigate, irrigate, irrigate. Once the clot separates from the arachnoid, it's very, very simple. So you can see the main vessel coming into view there. This is a loop, okay? This vessel is coming like that and it is attached here, okay? It is attached here. So you need to take off that loop, okay? So that's what we are going to do next. All this, if you hurry, you will make a complete mess out of it. But you see, this loop has a small, tiny vessel here. You will see that. Can you see that? Can you appreciate that? I'm not cutting that vessel. That is a, like a hair. There is a small vessel. Can you see that? Now after I dissect it, you can see that. There's a small, little bit, small loop. We are under very high magnification. That is not even the size of a hair, okay? So we are going to bipolar it. with a micro bipolar and then
and after this we are going to cut this and there is the aneurysm okay now i'm going to show you the, the this video will not have the clipping let me show you the clipping okay on my on my youtube channel the clipping is there so you can see the aneurysm now taking shape so that's cut and that is one vessel that is the aneurysm that is the mca that is another vessel okay that is a that is where the aneurysm is attached to the brain so you don't need to expose all that you, you will see you are dissecting around the aneurysm now now things become very easy it's a ruptured aneurysm but it now we have made it look like an unruptured aneurysm you see uh, sorry this clipping let me show you because before we finish this let me show you the clipping also go to youtube I wanted to just show the dissection in that video, but it is never complete unless you show the clipping as well. So, yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes. It's a video, right? Yeah, it's a video opening. Yeah, so it's the same aneurysm. So we are going to see the clipping now. So you can see the MCA coming out there. That is a branch. That's a branch. Okay. So we have just put a retractor over the aneurysm. Okay. Let us go back to the place where I'm still dissecting. You can see that is the aneurysm. That is the MCA, and I have dissected all around. That is the aneurysm dome. I'm putting a small retractor on the aneurysm dome. This is a risky maneuver, but as long as the pia is kept, there is no problem. But you have to handle that retractor yourself, okay? No assistance handling that. And plus, you know, if this aneurysm ruptures, you have the neck. It is like, you know, you know, if it ruptures, it can only, you know, they, they say, if an ant jumps, you know where it is going to land. So if this aneurysm ruptures, I know it is not going to trouble me too much. Of course, it will be a little bit of a mess, but I know. So it is better that I know I clearly see this aneurysm and then I expand, I, I go into the aneurysm. Um, I mean, I, I go around the aneurysm and then I, and then I clip. So you can see both the branches of that vessel beautifully uh, under very high magnification, you can see both so that is done now you can see the post-op ct you wash away all the blood and everything and then come out and then Okay, that's the post-op CT. Okay, looks good. Right, so 
that according to the feedback that I received, that is one video which is common. I mean, people are asking about common videos. Now, let's let's look at some some more of these common videos. Uh, another one, maybe let's look at a uh, maybe a white neck day comp. You see that? That aneurysm is pretty wide. And so again, we are what we are going to do is that is your optic nerve, that's your carotid. I want all the young guys to be very clear about this anatomy and how you're going to do this. So you're opening the cisterns there, a little bit of retraction there. That is a diamond knife used for opening the lateral part of the uh, carotid system. So you're opening that strand by strand. Again, arachnoid dissection, lot of arachnoid dissection, interoptic. So you can see the blood there. So irrigate out the blood so that you can see the arachnoid. Never operate with bloody arachnoid, okay? You will not see anything. You will not know whether that's arachnoid or that's a clot. So if you don't see whether there's arachnoid or clot, you will not know how to dissect. It'll be a mess, okay? So always clean out the blood and then after that, look for the arachnoid. The blood will go away by washing, by rubbing, everything, the blood will go away. But arachnoid won't. Arachnoid has to be cut sharp. So you can see the A1 now. Okay, you can see the A1. That is a clot. So that is probably the other A1 coming there. That is a lamina terminalis. Okay, so you're taking out some clots there. That's a lamina terminalis. That's a carotid. That's the optic nerve. You're clearly identifying the A1 there, okay, showing it to all your fellows and everybody so that now you are back into this aneurysm. You've taken a little bit of gyrus rectus there. That's a contralateral A2. This this sided A2, that is the ACOM complex, and that is aneurysm. You see, that's a wide necked aneurysm, okay? Stretching from all the way from this to that, you saw on the angio, okay? So now you need a clip to make sure that this A2 is not entrapped. This A2 will, I mean, unless you are a complete, uh, 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 you are not very bright, it's very difficult for you to, to take this A2. But in these kind of cases, it's very common that you take the other A2. You can see the A2, comp the other A1 now, there is the ACOM complex, okay? And your thing is that A2. You're worried about that A2, okay? So that is what you have to be worried about. So you are going to put a clip parallel to that A2 without taking that A2, and that's it. Okay, that A2 can be seen clearly, and that aneurysm is clear. All right. Let's see another aneurysm. What do you guys want to see? I mean, uh, yeah, could you get some feedback from the audience? What do you want to see? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I would like to see the feedbacks and answer questions. I mean, I would like to see a bachelor tip. So, you want to see a bachelor tip? Yeah, unruptured one, preferably. Right, let's see a basilatic. Right, so this is a posteriorly pointing basilatic. Okay, 
So you can see this aneurysm, that is a P1, P1, that's aneurysm, okay? So the basilar tips, there are many philosophies. Uh, you can go through subtemporal root. Subtemporal root is approached from here. The problem with the subtemporal root, um, in my perspective, okay, people swear by it. I mean, for example, you have worked here for some time and he swears by subtemporal root. He always goes to Basilar's by subtemporal root. For me, subtemporal root is opposite P1 is sometimes not seen. Okay, when you're putting in a clip, especially if it's a big aneurysm and you don't see the opposite P1, that gives you a very, very bad taste in the mouth till you see the post-op CT, okay? I mean, uh, sometimes you may get away with it. Sometimes you may pinch the opposite P1. That is the only worry about subtemporal. Otherwise, it's a fantastic approach, all right? And if you do a little bit of a pitrosectomy, uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful approach, subtemporal. But what I do is I, I go through the, because I am, uh, primarily a skull based guy and uh, then a vascular guy. So it's easy for me to do a, I don't do an OZ anymore. Earlier we used to do OZs, but what I do is I remove the clinoid and I take the temporal lobe. I do axial unlocking, which means I take the temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus. So this is axial unlocking, which means the temporal lobe, which is here, blocking my view in the, into the interpedangular system, extradurally, I am taking it away by peeling it away from the cavernous sinus. So I am increasing the optico carotid window and the window between the carotid and the third nerve. I'm increasing this window, thereby I can have a easy access to this basala. Okay, that's what we're gonna see. So the same thing, okay? I don't have to worry like a paraclinoid aneurysm here. I can drill the clinoid with almost gay abandon, okay? That is a cavernous sinus. That is a cavernous sinus. And that is an orbitomeningeal band I'm cutting away. That is a clinoid, okay? Under very, very high magnification, all right? So that, I'm exposing the clinoid here and I'm drilling off the clinoid completely. And then I am taking the clinoid out. Obviously you won't do that in paraclinoids. You've seen my videos of paraclinoids where we drill completely extradural, half extradural, half inter. That's a carotid, okay? That's a carotid of a clomotor membrane. And now once I've done that, I've, I'm just going to, oh, this is the optic nerve. That's a carotid there. That's a third nerve. That's a membrane of Liliquest. That's a third nerve, very clearly seen now. I'm opening the optico carotid window. Again, slowly looking for the ophthalmic, slowly opening. And then proximal sylvian. I'm opening the proximal sylvian. Again, slowly opening the proximal sylvian. No hurry again, okay? Just giving some. Cutting off away all that arachnoid. You can see the basilar complex starting to see now. You don't know what is what. So your key is the contralateral third nerve, okay? If you find the contralateral third nerve, you know that your P1 is above the third nerve, okay? So you're looking underneath this optic nerve, this is the carotid, okay? Underneath this optic, that's the basilar complex, I'm looking for the third nerve now. The third nerve should be somewhere there, okay? So you will see the third nerve now. I'm looking for it. You should know where to look also. Okay? If you look all over the place, that's not pleasant. So there you can see the third node there. That is the third node, contralateral third node. Okay? And then you know if that is the third node, this is P1. That is P1 and this is P1. And therefore, this is the aneurysm. The aneurysm is here. You must understand that it's posteriorly pointing. So 
This is P1, this is P1, this is basilar tip, and that is aneurysm. So I am putting a patty there, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing, you see that is a P1, and this aneurysm is stuck to the contralateral, ipsilateral P1. So I have to dissect and make some space there, okay? So I'm dissecting, making some space. Gently, again, slowly. If you make a, a movement here, then you'll be sitting here with cardiac arrest and all kinds of nonsense, okay? No need for that. I can show you a few ruptured basilars also. Uh, you will realize that this is a much better option to take your time and relax and hear a song and then click this once rather than uh, going under cardiac arrest and then trying to clip them, okay? You want to see a disaster also? I can show you a few disasters, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, you never become a basilar. You never start clipping basilar tips without a few, without a few disasters. Or after you started clipping a few, then at one point you will get overconfident and then you will have disaster. This is part and parcel of neurosurgery. Don't ever think that uh, there's any master who's uh, doing good neurosurgery without having disasters. Don't worry about disasters, okay? So slowly, while you're talking all this, we're gently dissecting the P1 away from the aneurysm, okay? So that's a, that's a rather big aneurysm. Can you see that? Can you guys see that? That's a P1, that's a P1. Third nerve is here, third nerve, contralateral third nerve was here, and then you're going to put the clip. Okay? Yeah, that's it, that's it, thank you. So the first clip, you don't want to push. So you, you don't want to push, so you are being very, very careful. You see, there's no proximal control. There's absolutely no proximal control, okay? So you are slowly closing, opening, opening, closing, and then getting this aneurysm inside your clip gently, and then closing the clip, right? So that is your basilar tip. So you can see that is a, this is a superior cerebellar, this is the P1 basilar tip. That is a basilar. And you can see that is the interpedangular system. That's a brain stem. Okay, that's the midbrain coming right at you. Okay. So that's a clip aneurysm with absolutely no filling. You will see that now. I, I, I like to go all around again as seeing everything. That's a P1, that's a P1, okay? You have to make sure if you need to take out your clip at this point, you have to take it out. There's no question about it. Because there are many times you do a beautiful clipping for basilar, patient never wakes up because you clip, so you clip something, okay? So that is your, that is your carotid, that is your basala, okay? And uh, absolutely everything is okay, looks all right. There is no, nothing filling listed to the clip, okay? That is P1, that is superior cerebellar. P1 here, that's a basilar trunk, okay? That's a superior cerebellar. Right, Abhilash. Are you there, Abhilash? Yes, I'm here. That was fantastic. I mean, uh, I think uh, drilling the Kleinert has always been one of my, uh, um, it's, it's always uh, nerve wracking when you're that deep and you're using a drill. Um, and uh, uh, using a diamond drill is, uh, uh, do, do you control the speed at all? Or do you have a certain, do you keep it at the same speed or start slow and uh, uh, any, any- Let me show you. Let me show you a Kleiner drilling, which is much, much more dangerous, okay? So that is the last case that we will talk about. This is a paracliner aneurysm, okay? So that is a clinoid, 
that is aneurysm. So that is a, you can see that, that's yep. the clinoid and that's the aneurysm. The aneurysm, this is a ruptured aneurysm. It's a transitional aneurysm where it is ruptured and this is literally on the clinoid. Okay, this aneurysm is touching the clinoid. So we're going to do an ex complete extradural drilling here. Okay, so I'm going to open the orbital meningeal band. Open the orbital meningeal band. That's a cavernous, that is a true cavernous membrane. So I'm opening that. I'm getting the temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus. So literally opening the frontotemporal angle. Opening the frontotemporal angle so that the clinoid is very, very clear. So that's the clinoid now. Further dissection. That is the third node. That is the cavernous sinus. You can see that that is the cavernous sinus. Okay, this is the temporal lobe. This is the frontal lobe. I'm dissecting the temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus. That is the third node coming there. So you got to be very, very careful. Okay, so that is the superior orbital fissure there. So that is the clinoid. All right. So you must understand this aneurysm is literally touching the clinoid. So I'm displacing the third nerve a little bit away from the cavernous sinus. You are under very, very high magnification, okay? You must know that. And we are drilling it all, all away, completely away. The, 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 uh, your clinoid is being drilled away at very high magnification. That's the orbital roof there. I mean, sorry, that's the optic roof there. You have blue lined it, and then you are drilling off most of the bone with a two millimeter drill now. That is your cavernous sinus. Third nerve and fourth nerve in the cavernous sinus. So I'm just exhaling out this clinoid. That is your optic nerve. There, there is your aneurysm, okay? Your aneurysm is going to be there. So This you cannot obviously do it like the basilar tip. You cannot just bite off the clinoid. If you bite off the clinoid there, you will have the aneurysm rupture. So you are going to define this clinoid more better and better now. And then under very high magnification, this I call it painting. Okay. I don't call it drilling. I call it painting. And a very high speed. The drill is, drill is at very, very high speed. So there will be no torque at all when you touch. Okay? No torque to your fingers at all when you touch because you are, you are under very high speed. Okay? What I do is I go near the structure, increase the speed to the maximum, and then touch. Okay? I go near, increase the speed to the maximum, and then just touch. Okay? So you just touching, painting it. So you're painting the clinoid, taking layers by layer of the clinoid, okay? So you must understand you have the dura there. So your aneurysm is protected by the dura. See, you're painting it off. Not drilling it off, painting it off, okay? You cannot drill in this area with the aneurysm right underneath. If you drill, you have trouble. So paint it off. Once you come, again, under extremely high magnification, again paint it. That is the optic nerve. Okay, that is the optic nerve. That is a strut. And there is the aneurysm. Okay? So you that is the optic now, complete. That is the optic now, completely now. You will see that that is aneurysm. And using a one millimeter drill now, I'm taking off the remainder of the strut. That is aneurysm. You can see the aneurysm. Again, painting it off. 
you see under what corridor i am working this is a this corridor is a just a few millimeters okay i am going into the optic strut the, mag the microscope is almost you know we have the pro mag and the three step magnification changes so that we get a magnification of 42 so that is the magnification that we are under that's a 1 millimeter drill okay we are under on on a highest magnification and taking off the strut now and this one millimeter drill if you see it's like a needle actually that's a two millimeter suction you see that how small it looks this thing looks like so and if you do a bad motion you will go right through the dura it's like a needle you see so and you are the aneurysm is there you will see that is underneath the optic nerve is the aneurysm when you open the dura you will see that And you keep on removing the whole optic strut and the clinoid. Keep on drilling the entire clinoid away. That is your main part of the surgery. Once you do that, you see that's the optic now. That's a that is an image. That was the clinoid which you took off. It is directly in touch with the animals. Okay. So, and then now it's easy for you. It's very easy. You see, that's the optic now. That's a falsiform ligament, which that is a distal neural ring. Okay. All can be beautifully exposed because the clinoid is out. There is no clinoid. You know, you can see that there's only a fold. You can easily cut here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a hook. I'm going to put in a hook. See, I'm going to put in a hook into the into the falciform ligament along the optic nerve and cut this away. And then I have the aneurysm. So this is a transitional aneurysm. You see, and when I cut laterally, I'm going into the optic. I mean, op, uh, into the cavernous sinus roof. So the C3. Carotid. So once I go deeper, in, you are going into the cavernous sinus roof. You are going into the extradural carotid. Okay. So you have cut the distal dual ring. Okay. It gets incorporated with the vessel wall. So you have to be careful there. That is your optic nerve. Okay. That is your optic nerve. You have the carotid there. And you are, that is your carotid, that is your carotid here, okay? When you, you will see now that you can, I show everybody how I'm going to put the clip usually <laughs> with the bayonet, okay? I have got into trouble with that, but uh, generally I like to uh, show people how I'm going to clip so that all my guys <coughs> get a clear idea of what I'm going to do. So... Nobody is in the dark. So that, that is the that is the carotid. The carotid from the ca cavernous sinus is going to come like that and then turn. So you must know that. Okay. The carotid from the once I put the clip, you will see that the cavernous carotid you will see. So I'm going to displace that aneurysm a little bit down so that I can see the carotid here. The carotid that is the carotid there. So the carotid line should be there. So, you will see now. See, that's a carotid. Can you see, everybody? That's a carotid. Okay, I took out the optic nerve a little bit and you can see the carotid there. Okay. I, I just gently caress the aneurysm. Okay, you can see. And then now I'm going to put in the clip. I know that the C3 carotid is going to dip down there. So, put in this clip. Sometimes you cannot take everything with one clip. So don't worry about that. Just use two clips. Okay. So once I clip, you will see the carotid going into the cavernous sinus. That is a carotid going into the cavernous. Can you see that carotid coming up? That's a carotid coming up. Okay. C3 carotid. Intracavernous. That's the intracavernous carotid. 
and that is your introducer. And you have a dog ear here. You see, you have a dog ear. So you use another clip. You don't have to have a small, if you don't have a small clip, use a big clip, but then clip only half. Right. So that is your carotid. Okay. All right. So you saw clipping, complete extra clipping of the clinoid there. I mean, drilling of the clinoid. Any other questions or anything else? Comments? Any questions? Yeah, please. I'm stopping to share. Okay. Okay, comments or questions? Now's your chance. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead, Delay. Hello, I. Yeah. Right. Yes. Somewhere in your lecture, you have also said about sagittal unlocking. We know axial unlocking from your lectures. Uh, forgotten yeah. sagittal unlocking. So, can you remind me about that? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, there are three types of unlocking to get into the skull base. Okay. The whole concept of skull base is because the brain is folded like that. This is, temp this is a frontal lobe, this is a temporal lobe. Okay. This is folded like that, and therefore, you have to get into the base, you have to take this folding off. Mm. So, the sagittal unlocking is this. So, how do you do that? You take off the sphenoid ridge, you take off the anterior clinoid, you do sagittal unlocking. Mm. The temporal lobe is also like this. So, axial unlocking is taking the temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus, like that. This is axial mm. unlocking. So, the sagittal unlocking is this, the axial unlocking is this. One more unlocking is intradural. That is how Yasagil and all the uh, previous generation neurosurgeons used to get into the skull base. That is sylvian dissection. Mm -hmm. So that is, I call it intradural oblique unlocking. So there you are opening the temporal, I mean the frontal temporal like that. Like that. So you have sagittal unlocking, you have axial unlocking, and you have intradural oblique unlocking. So these are this is the way to get into the skull base. So if you combine all these three, the entire skull base is yours. Okay, thank you. Okay, more questions, comments? Come on, you guys, this is the, the advantage of this is interactivity, you gotta use it. Yeah, hello. Go ahead. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, we do. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, very nice work. Uh, one of the problems uh, during this kind of surgery is the intraoperative rupture of intracranial aneurysms. Uh, uh, do, do you have your experience some uh, uh, rupture uh, before your opening? And Beg your how pardon? did you manage? And how did you manage these situations? Um, I didn't understand you. Say the I didn't. I didn't get your question. So if you so can, I, I have to tell hello. The hello. I, he's saying. He's saying that. He's saying that that sometimes there is uh, intraoperative rupture, and yeah. before you open the dura. So he's asking how you manage it. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So in this case. I generally, for paraclinoid aneurysms, I generally have a neck control. So before opening the dura, generally uh, it doesn't rupture, but when I open, if, I, if it ruptures, then I generally go for, a, uh, I go for the neck control, then I open the dura fast and open the systems, and I try to put a distal clip. Okay, once I put the distal clip, then it's uh, much more easier. I can also, in some of my other lectures, show you many of these ruptures. Maybe we can have a class just on ruptures. This is uh, actually a paraclinoid aneurysm becomes much more easier and much less time, much less time uh, to clip if it ruptures. Because then you can use the neck control, you can put a distal clip and you can aggressively dissect the aneurysm and uh, clip it. Okay, maybe, um, 
the next week or something, we can dedicate an entire class for different ruptures. Basilar, paraclinoid, ACOM, any amount of ruptures you want, I can show you ruptures and how we deal with it. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Go ahead. Yeah. Go Hello. Ahead. Go ahead. So, uh, Uday Gupta here. Uday Gupta yes. from India here. So how do you uh, deal with edema and do you break the lilacus mem uh, membrane all the time and how you de decrease the edema? I, I didn't get you. Um, one more time. Uday, tell me one more time, please. Mm, he's muted. Hold on. So how do you decrease the edema? The edema. If there's a tight the brain, edema. yeah. If there's a tight brain, how do you decrease? Yeah, yeah. So generally, if I have a very edematous brain, I generally, if it is ischemic, there's nothing much you can do. I mean, this aneurysm clipping is going to be a disaster. Again, I can show you a few cases there like that. Okay, where we have to clip very fast. But if it is, if it is just Subarachnoid hemorrhage and edema, opening all the systems and washing out the blood uh, very slowly. It is, uh, you know, um, it is, I mean, very slowly, if you do that, you will be able to deal with the edema. Okay. Somebody, I have, uh, I have seen somebody writing that as much as I appreciate the slow, elegant movements, I feel that the surgeon should move efficiently and uh, expeditiously through the operation that will result in lesser operating time, less time for patient under anesthesia, reduce risk of infection and multiple other advantages. But yes, of course, I agree with you, but the most important thing is an unruptured aneurysm and all your risk of infection, reduced anesthesia is not important. I have operated for eight hours. I have operated for 10 hours. Nothing much really happens to the patient if the operation is good. But if you, if you push, pull, and if you move, try to move fast, okay, uh, you are going to create problems. Believe me, my boy. I mean, maybe you have a lot of experience, then fastness. I can I will show you where we have finished the cases in half an hour, okay? Half an hour, we have finished the ACOM aneurysm. But this is not what is important. What is important is slow movements. If you are starting your aneurysm surgery, think about opening systems, nothing else. Don't worry about infection. Don't worry about anesthesia time. Don't worry about anything in the world. Think just about opening system. This is my advice to you. Maybe people have different perspectives, but it is my advice to you. That if you're starting, just don't worry about uh, all this time and tell your anesthetist, we are in for a long haul. I am going to clip an aneurysm. We are going, we are in for a long haul. Get your lunch and dinner ready and be with me. That is all. All right. Don't, don't have two ways about it. Hey, Dr. Zafdam Ash, I, how do you deal with hydrocephalus in subarachnoid hemorrhages? Due to aneurysm rupture. Yeah, so if you have ventricular blood, then I open the laminar terminalis most of the time. If I don't have ventricular blood, I wash out all the blood from because I'm, I'm I do it pretty slow and I wash out all the blood. So I really don't uh, uh, I don't have a problem uh, with uh, hydrocephalus a lot of times because. I wash out all the blood, as much as blood that I can, I wash out. And I open all the systems. But if there is ventricular blood, I go and open the laminar terminus. Okay, more comments, okay, questions? I, go ahead, Dr. Kanu. Okay, um, I, 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 I couldn't agree uh, uh, more about your discussion on speed and safety. Um, safety first before uh, speed. I just wanted you to uh, give your opinion on um, uh, lumbar drain, um, its use and its abuse uh, with aneurysm. Uh, uh, well, I sometimes if there is really bad edema and I really don't want to retract like in a cystinostomy or something, I don't want to retract too much. 
I put in a lumbar drain and I open it just when I am opening the dura, I open and drain about 30 ml and try to get some space. But most of my aneurysms are done without any lumbar drain. I don't think it is required if you know how to open the systems. And if you think when you are retracting for that, if you're not going to create a rupture, then I don't think really a lumbar drain is necessary. But it is a very, very helpful procedure. Having said that, it is a very, very helpful procedure. Uh, yeah. Dr. Go ahead. Bachin asked me something. Uh, okay, I can uh, explain this to him. Maybe, and, uh, uh, maybe I can... Uh, I can just give my WhatsApp number, so uh, it is zero zero nine seven seven nine eight one seven two four three four three four, so that I can explain when they give me a call or something. Uh, when we are having some free time, I can explain to them in a very clear way as to what is the concept of this locking. Okay. Does everyone see Ipe's number there? It's in the chat. There. Okay, more comments, questions? You guys are quiet. Uh, oh, hi. Go ahead, go ahead, Dr. Modi. Uh, thank you so much. Sorry, I didn't get the concept of uh, the unlocking. Um, is it, how is it different from different surgical approaches for skull base? Um. I mean, it is the same thing as the different surgical approaches for skull base, but uh, unlocking is why you do skull base approaches. You know, it is not actually skull base. It is actually brain base. Skull base is a wrong term. It is a brain base. So the brain is folded like that. And that is why you have to get into things which are in the base of the brain. So for example, the basilar tip is in the base. A craniopharyngioma is in the base. A clinoidal meningioma is in the base. Uh, most aneurysms are in the base. So how do you get into the base? That is what the concept is what unlocking. So you don't have to do the unlocking every time, everywhere. But um, the unlocking is done in a sagittal way, in an axial way. And intradurally, you can open between the frontal and temporal and that is called the sylvian dissection so the sagittal way is drilling off the sphenoid ridge and the anterior clinoid axial way is peeling the temporal lobe away from the transcavernous approach dolan's approach dolan's genius lied in that i mean he, his genius was the fact that he peeled away the temporal lobe extradurally away from the cavernous sinus therefore increasing the access into the interpretancular assistant. So the posterior skull base, the posterior part of the suppressor assistant can be accessed by axial unlocking. The anterior part of the skull base can be easily accessed by sagittal unlocking. Of course, it's a, it's a mix. It is not always isolated. And then most of the earlier generations of skull base surgeons used to get into the base by using something called the sylvian dissection, extensive sylvian dissection, you can get into the skull. But you combine these extradural procedures with sylvian dissection, the results are much better. Okay. More comments? You, I, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, I, I'm talking about uh, sylvian dissection. Again, the, the concept is uh, something that sometimes uh, young surgeons, uh, inexperienced uh, neurosurgeons think uh, just want to split the uh, sylvian fissure. I think you will probably find one of your lectures and then demonstrate uh, sylvian fissure opening mm -hmm. in such a way that it does not um, uh, uh, injure the vessels and then damage the, the frontal lobe. Again, um, I appreciate the fact that um, you don't use uh, uh, retractors, and I like it because uh, using uh, parties rolled in can um, help one um, open the sylvian fissure fully. But a lot of people tend to want to retract, and that causes a lot of vascular injury. Maybe you take some time and then um, discuss that in the course of aneurysm lectures. 
Yeah, I mean, maybe one of the classes we can uh, just focus on Sylvian dissection, okay? Um, I have no policies, as I told you, I have no policies about proximal to distal, distal to proximal. I have absolutely no policies like that. I cut away all the arachnoid in my way till only the vessels remain. Okay, this is my policy. It is very simple. There is nothing distal, proximal. If I see a strand of arachnoid, I cut it away. So there is no classification, distal, proximal, proximal, distal. I cut starting from the carotid all the way to the distal, uh, till the distal MCA branches are seen. I take out every single arachnoid strand. And it takes time. But at the end of it, you have a beautifully open sylvian fissure mm -hmm. with all the vessels standing out. But we will do a class on this someday. We will do a class on this. Okay, I, uh, any more comments, closing comments, questions? Somebody asked me, is in low bifurcating basilato aneurysms, drilling PCP is necessary? Yes, it is. It is necessary if you are coming from this approach. Uh, maybe you can go to the YouTube and uh, see the PCP drilling videos that we have posted. So we have posted PCP drilling uh, through the Supra Bravo approach uh, many years back. And uh, also maybe in 2012, we have posted these videos of uh, Supra, Supra Bravo uh, approach and PCP drilling. And uh, also we have drill, we have shown tyrional approach and PCP drilling uh, between the optic, optico carotid corridor, we have shown the PCP drilling again. So you can see those videos. Are those videos online I, uh, or the private videos? Beg your pardon? Are, are those videos online? The videos? That yes, you... yes, yes. No, 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 they are online, they are on YouTube. Can, can you alone. can you put the address in there the, in the chat box so uh, people can see the which link is that? Yeah, yeah. uh, you can just go to YouTube and just type Ipe Cherry in, and okay. then you have a channel. You just uh, type, look at the videos, and you can see all these videos. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, I'll do.